This is because the battery in reality has some internal resistance R. So, the voltage across the terminals of the battery V is EMF minus IR, where I is the current in the circuit and R is the internal resistance of the battery. So, in order to measure the EMF of the cell, the current in the battery should be zero. The potentiometer works on the principle that when a wire of uniform area of cross section homogeneous composition and low temperature coefficient of resistance is connected to a battery and a steady current is passed through it Then, by Ohm's law, potential difference at the two ends of the wire is given by V is equal to IR. Where I is the current in the circuit, R is the resistance of the wire. Now, R is equal to rho into L divided by A. V is equal to I rho into L divided by A. I, rho and A are made constant, then the potential drop is directly proportional to the length of the wire. V is directly proportional to L, V is equal to K into L, K is equal to V divided by L. K is the potential drop per unit length or potential gradient. Let us understand the second principle on which the potentiometer works. When two cells of EMFs E1 and E2 are connected in a circuit in such a way that their positive ends are connected together and their negative ends together with a galvanometer. The current from the cell E1 will flow in the anti-clockwise direction whereas the current from the cell E2 will flow in the clockwise direction. If E1 is greater than E2 the galvanometer deflects towards left. If E1 is less than E2, the galvanometer deflects towards right. If E1 is equal to E2, the galvanometer shows null deflection, that is, no current is flowing in the circuit. In this case, the potential drop V1 is equal to V2. E1 minus IR is equal to E2 minus IR. As I equal to 0, V1 is equal to E1 and V2 is equal to E2. Therefore, E1 is equal to E2.